Say playset to anyone from the Gen X set and images of Grayskull, the Ewok Village, Ghostbusters, Firehouse, and quite possibly the USS Flag will surely come to mind. But if you simply say the Hideaway House or Green Giant Farm and Factory playset, well, you might just get a perplexed head tilt of curiosity or even doubt. But without a doubt, these existed and were played with by kids like us. I'm Victor, straight out of the Gen Experience, toy line playsets that may surprise and delight with having never known they existed, or even shock you that they were produced at all. These obscure but awesome playsets of the 1970s will not include those made almost entirely of cardboard, nor those made for paper or cardboard figures. But for any toy line with plastic figures or dolls that needed a place to interact in, we've got you covered, including some of those famous Amigo playsets we all love. But first, a stop at the Mission Control Center. The $6 million man had a billion dollar industry when it came to merchandising. The toy line had a variety of accessories and play packs for Steve Austin to engage in and even fellow characters to interact with, including Sasquatch. This plastic dome is where the missions began and looks like Steve can keep tabs on all the action. Which includes what Jamie Summers is up to, Creeper. This figure, very similar to the 12-inch G.I. Joe that was taking a backseat on toy shelves for franchises like the $6 million man and celebrity dolls, could stay in contact with the OSI office, a small place set in the line. But that one was mostly cardboard and not inflatable. That's right, the Mission Control Center is more like a space station with a central computer at the hub in a vinyl inflatable, reminiscent of a pool toy. Even at 30 inches, it was difficult to interact with your figure when it closed in a transparent balloon. Lucky for that escape hatch, huh? Or is he just jumping through the wall? No, I don't blame him. It looks claustrophobic. Larger doll figures didn't have a lot of large playsets, but many adventure packs that you could connect together for greater fun. And to keep the cost down for Kenner and for those bargain shoppers, the inflatable mission control would be repurposed as the Bionic Woman's Dome Home. Apparently, Jamie couldn't be trusted with highly confidential or technical material, so they used the same vinyl balloon structure to make a little getaway for, as the package describes, Jamie to entertain friends. When she wasn't at her job at the cardboard schoolhouse playset, void of any computer equipment, it had everything one needed for a small dome cabin just painted on the vinyl walls. It was almost identical to Steve's, except Jamie got a couple of pool chairs and an awesome mid-century fireplace. But no escape hatch. It would be a travesty not to mention the Bionic Woman's Carriage House, the Jamie Summers doll Four Foot Home, apparently just another place to wait for Oscar Goldman to send her on a perilous mission perfect for the bionic implants. A home meant for relaxing, but designed for bionic action. At least that's what the box said. This one looks more comfortable, and a kid could actually play with the features in the set instead of staring at them through transparent walls. Not sure why it was a carriage house since there was no stable or horses, but it did come with a funky hanging egg chair. It may surprise you that most of these playsets from the time also came from popular TV and movie franchises like they did in the 80s, but not all of them. The next were from very popular franchises, but of a whole different variety. PlaySchool's Familiar Places line picked a very familiar place to depict in one of the most popular playsets. Their unique square style figures enjoyed the Holiday Inn and all its amenities through very detailed accessories that accompanied the two-level hotel with iconic sign, complete with interchangeable messages for the marquee. Holiday Inns were vacations, weekend getaways, and if they had a holodome, you were in for a treat only miles away from your house. This place that didn't have a holodome, but if you're interested, check out my whole holodome story here on my channel, link in the description. While out for a little family vacation, make sure to stop for gas at another familiar place from play school, the Texaco Gas Station and Garage. Hours of fun for your little ones, working grease pit and an eject button for vehicles at the end of the car wash. I wonder if they offer any of those dollar Christmas albums like Firestone and B.F. Goodrich did. Well, PlaySchool went even more familiar with their McDonald's playset. While on the road, you'll need to pull over to curb those hunger pangs. Dark oranges, browns, and red topped with those Spanish-style mansard roofs, this exciting playset is exactly how we remember it from those rare occasions we retreated to the Golden Arches. The sign, the brick, and even the tile floor inside made even an imaginary trip for a cheeseburger and fry as thrilling as the real thing. I should know. I played with it for hours. And that poster of Ronald and the working cash register at the counter really brought McDonald Land to life. Speaking of McDonald Land coming to life, in 1976, Remco was licensed to make doll figures of Ronald and all his friends for their McDonald Land playset. 
All the most popular characters from the commercials were there, where a bridge traveled over a lake of filet of fish, a swing from the apple pie tree, and a working train circled the fun. And for whatever reason, and probably a first for any playset, a pair of stilts. Yes, stilts for Ronald. So many adventures to inspire my imagination when playing with it in the family room in front of the bay windows. I had two McDonald's play sets? Wonder if that affected my adult eating habits. Nah, just don't judge my mother. I loved her for getting us these. But then again, she also got me this beauty. Yeah, it just seemed like fast food play sets had their day and this was it. Remco and Play School weren't the only toy manufacturers guiding you to hardened arteries. Child Guidance was the toy maker for the KFC, no, the Kentucky Fried Chicken playset. They produce their own fast food toy that dreams are made of, if your dreams are original recipe or extra crispy. Complete with buckets of chicken and the Colonel himself. And if that isn't enough, he and the customers all doubled as finger puppets. This playset proved that deep fried goodness is just as developmental as G.I. Joe. Child Guidance did try to offer a balanced meal when it came to their food-related playsets. Alongside the bucket of chicken, little ones could have fun on the farm. The Green Giant Farm and Factory, to be frank. Yes, that Green Giant, complete with his oversized head looking down on Sprout, his son, I think, and the production line. Sprout and the farmers were also finger puppets and introduced us children to just how our required vegetables are harvested and then slaughtered before heading to our favorite grocer. But they didn't stop there. With all the food-related fun, Child Guidance encouraged us to get out and exercise. Well, at least get some minimal activity by playing inside their Brunswick Bowling Alley playset. Brunswick was the king of bowling. You might remember their logo throughout your childhood. This was the most interactive of them all, with spring-loaded action, ball return, and automatic pin reset. This was a keeper. And if you want more, well, look up Child Guidance's Coney Island Action Arcade. Not sure if Coney Island was a place for children at the time, but We'll move on to something completely different. Mark's toys had been around for years and the 1976 Navarone Giant playset was a huge five level mountain base for static plastic army men. Mark's had made a variety of playsets over the years, including a bedrock one years earlier for Fred Flintstone. But this mountain stands out for its playability. Once all the army men were casualties of war, the dog or MIA under your bed, many other franchises and action figures could move in and use it as an awesome base. I know mine became a poor man's Snake Mountain when I transitioned from the 70s to the 80s. Funny, it's not based on the movie Guns of Navarone, and there was no Battle of Navarone in World War II like it states on the box, so one of a kind, and a good one. You may consider them just dollhouses, but aren't those just playsets too? I think Barbie would agree. However, more obscure than any dream house was the Charlie's Angels Hideaway House. Like Steve and Jamie of the Bionic franchise, the female PIs of Townsend Detective Agency had various adventure packs that included accessories for their mission, but really concentrated on new outfits they could use to stop the perps dead in their tracks with those cute little numbers. But besides any role-playing sets or their van, the Hideaway House was a mega playset. The ultra-modern three-level rotating home was a place to get away. But their Hefner-like boss, Charlie, could still find him with the use of the Hidden Communications Center. Good thing Bosley didn't even know where the hideaway was, or he'd be there all the time. I guess no one was going to complete their collection with the Bosley doll. The main three angels were there, just don't confuse them for their celebrity dolls. Same goes for Cheryl Ladd when she joined the team. But that's a story for a whole nother show. Hasbro created this super chic home for the ladies to look fabulous in, or to head out and kick ass from. Another doll playset out of the same time also highlighted the working woman. Uh, just not as dangerous. The Sears exclusive airline reservation center. We already know Sears had a knockoff Barbie, Lindsay. So a playset of part cardboard and part plastic accessories completed the reservation center for an airline. There were no other parts of the playset, so what bargain basement airline it is is anybody's guess. This playset was reused a lot. And it looks like for a short time, Wonder Woman had to make ends meet by picking up a shift there. There was even a smaller version, the floor model, that only included the main console for the economy shopper. But reusing a playset was common. Nothing like the family treehouse from Kenner or Palatoy, depending on what side of the pond you're on. An incredible and detailed playset for youngsters with an amazing feature. The treehouse could push clothes for travel and safekeeping and then pop back open at the press of a button to play somewhere else completely. Yes, I had this one too. And I remember the crank elevator to the living area quite well. Are you keeping track? I've had five of these wacky and wonderful 1970s playsets. What about you? Which ones do you remember playing with and which got the most use? In regard to most use, this one had many of them beat. 
The Tree Tot family were kicked out in 1983 when Wicket and his Ewok friends moved in and redecorated the house to the moon of Endor for Return of the Jedi. It was a great rebrand. And years later, this set is still in use and now features adorable forest critters living together in harmony. So, as the Ewoks would say, Ewok Family Hut and other Wicked the Ewok toys, each sold separately. After a viewer had commented they hoped to hear about the Fighting Furies, I had to add them. Matchbox entered the action figure doll race in 1974, creating quality figures of various pirate designs. The Fighting Furies came complete with action features, including flex body action. Whoa! Like many lines, they had their small action packs, like the longboat and the raft. But when it came to play sets, besides a cardboard diorama, they had a Spanish galleon vinyl carrying case and a Skull Island hideout, complete with skull tooth booby trap and lots of booty. There was also a more substantial pirate ship, or a cross-section of, with a brig and a hammock, as well as captain's quarters. Although an excellent line, they were short-lived and Matchbox focused on their domination of the toy car market and set the pirates sailing into the sunset. These are the precursors to iconic playsets of the mega intellectual properties to come in the 80s. But one late 70s playset was the writing on the wall. Kenner's Death Star had to be mentioned. It may not be as obscure, but it is wonderful. We saw for the first time what a playset could do, what it could offer. The sheer size made us take notice. The play features made us want it. The new three and three quarter inch action figures allowed for more playability within smaller spaces. And in the four story space station, the action was plentiful. Retractable bridge, trap door, working elevator, exploding gun, and of course, a perilous trash compactor complete with a green plastic Dianoga. All of this made it the holy grail of the time. Who knew if or when another such grand playset would emerge? Little did we know. Mego might not have gotten the Star Wars license deal, but they were the biggest risk taker in toy companies. The sheer number of playsets and brands they licensed were staggering. Check out whole videos on the subject from other channels. Just give me a couple minutes until I'm done because here are a few reminders of some of the most memorable well, at least my favorite. Planet of the Apes Treehouse. Not the village, the fortress, or the forbidden zone, and not Amp's go set for paper figures, but the treehouse complex. Short on action features, the play value is still pretty good for the Mego Planet of the Apes doll figures, especially if you added the additional battering ram, catapult, Cajun cart to it. It became a fun base or outpost for one of the most popular brands of all time. And if you don't believe me, take a look at Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade Float of Planet of the Apes. Now that's popular. And then there's this gargantuan playset. At first it gives full on Barbie Dreamhouse vibes, but with detailed cardboard inserts to give us the DC action and Batman Easter eggs required to be the Wayne Foundation, this is one heck of a forgotten treasure. It has few features, but the elevator and the secret bookcase hiding compartment were enough. And it's a rare find in good condition. But as a kid of a certain age, this was right up my alley. Sadly, not one I was lucky enough to own. Now you may have expected this one to come up, but the groovy bridge with the interchangeable scenes for the view screen may have seemed just like a box laden with your grandma's plastic furniture coverings, but the bridge furniture and the duty stations lent itself to creativity for the whole cast of Star Trek and their villains. But the coup de gras was the incredible magic trick of the transporter that offered endless fun, just spinning and pressing the button all while the yellow molecularization images changes wildly until you make it stop. Holding up for easy storage, this is easily a favorite of mine. What about you? Mego certainly led the way during the decade. It even closed out the 70s with a nicely constructed Star Trek Enterprise playset for the original motion picture and their set of three and three quarter inch figures. But although some were fascinating, others stood out for their utter audacity or curiosity, like the Emerald City or Fonzie's Garage. I don't know, you might think Fonzie's Garage should be mentioned, so mentioned. My only question is, where the hell was the 1970s Scooby-Doo Haunted Mansion playset? I can imagine that thing filled with all kinds of action features and cool special effects. It's a missed opportunity. Big mistake. Big. Huge. There you have it for some groovy, far out, and awesome playsets from the 1970s. Either way, they all seem a bit obscure when overshadowed by their upstarts from the 1980s. But you can't deny the wild, wacky, and wonderful way we all played. Which did you get under your Christmas tree? What was the most memorable? Remember, this is just my opinion, my most memorable, but I'd sure love for you to share others that you remember well. Speaking of sharing, if you like the show, please feel free to share the video. Since it's Christmas, how about a little goodwill toward your fellow man with a like and subscribe. Thanks to my returning viewers and make sure to look for other awesomeness on the channel and from the Gen Experience. Thanks for watching and until next time.